All right, welcome back. You now know the object-oriented basics. Let's talk about some Scala-specific niceties in this video. All right, so in the ID, let's go to the part two OOP package and let's create a dedicated application in which we are going to play. So let's call this method notations. Of course, make this an object, hit OK, and then extends app. Now, in this little object that we created right here, I'm going to create a new class, person, in the same style as we did in the last video. But now I'm creating a class person inside the object because otherwise it would conflict with the other class person that we wrote in the previous video. We're going to talk about conflicting and packaging later on in this section. But for now, just declare the class person inside the method notations object. All right. So I'm going to create a new class person with two parameters, with a name, which is a string. I'm going to make this a member, that is a field, that is, I'm going to add the val keyword here, and um, I'm going to add a favorite movie parameter, which is also a string. I created this little class person as you see it here because I want to show you some really cool Scala features that make Scala resemble natural language much more so than other programming languages. So bear with me here. I'm going to define a method inside the person class here called likes and I'm going to pass it a movie which is a string and this guy will return a boolean And its implementation is going to be very simple. Uh, we're go just going to say that this person likes the movie if the movie equals favorite movie. Okay. Otherwise, this person will not like the movie. The implementation itself doesn't matter all that much because I want to show you something. So let's define a value here. Let's call this Mary. And we're going to instantiate the person class that we wrote here. Person. And let's give Mary the name Mary with a capital M. And as the favorite movie, we're going to pass in, say, Inception. Nice movie. And let's print the statement that, or the expression that Mary likes Inception. Of course, this will evaluate to true. So let's right click and run. And as we expected, the value true is printed to the console. But here's what I'm about to write. So instead of Mary dot likes inception, I'm going to supply a different way of calling the likes method. Here's how it goes. Mary space likes space inception. These two expressions, Mary dot likes inception and Mary space likes space inception are equivalent. But how cool is that? Mary likes inception. This is so, so natural language. This is called infix notation or operator notation. And it only works with methods which have only one parameter. So object dot method with a single parameter can be replaced with the expression object method parameter, just like that. So first takeaway is that methods with a single parameter can be called in this infix notation style. Now the term infix or operator notation is actually pretty intentional because what I'm about to talk right now is operators in Scala. Now I put operators in between quotes and you'll understand what this means in a second. But before that, let's just create another fun method in the class person saying, for example, that this person is hanging out with another person. So let's just define a method called hangout with. And this method will receive another person as a parameter. And it just returns a string. And uh, let's just say that the implementation is pretty simple. An S interpolated string saying that this name is hanging out with the other person's name. Uh, not other, but person.name. So because I defined this method with a single parameter, now this method can be used in an infix notation as well. So if I define a new person, let's say Tom, which is a new person with the name 
Tom, and let's just say that Tom likes Fight Club. Amazing movie, of course. We can actually print line that Mary hang out with Tom. This is actually a valid expression, and as you've learned, this method can be used in an infix style because it receives a single parameter. So if I right click and run this, we're just going to see Mary is hanging out with Tom. Now I used the term operator earlier because in this case the method hangout with acts like an operator between Mary and Tom which yields a string. In this case the string Mary is hanging out with Tom. So this guy acts like an operator between two things yielding a third thing. Now the term operator is actually reminiscent from math, right? So if you think of, a, uh, of an operator example, you think of these math operators like plus, minus, and so on and so forth. Now the thing is that Scala actually has an extremely permissive method naming scheme. So if I actually rename this method to have the name and or plus, that's actually a valid method. So if I say Mary plus Tom, that's actually calling the method called plus in the class person. This is super cool and this is what makes Scala extremely enjoyable to work with because it gives you such freedom to name your methods as you want. Where in other languages the characters like plus or hash or dollar or ampersand are actually reserved, in Scala they're not, at least for methods. So if I define a method called plus, that's actually a valid method. And the expression Mary plus Tom is a valid expression which actually calls Mary dot plus with a parameter tom. Let's just write it so it's clearer. Mary.plus with parameter tom. That's actually a valid expression. Now at this point you probably are wondering, and I'm here to dispel any mystery, that the plus operators between numbers are actually methods as well. So if I say print line 1 plus 2, that's the same as printing 1 dot plus with parameter 2. So mathematical operators are actually acting in the exact same way as methods because they are. So the takeaway here is, and I'm going to write this in all caps, all operators are methods. If you're curious, you can actually control space after you um, put in the dot after a number. So I, if I'm going here and I hit control space, the um, IDE will actually give me all the available methods and it will give me all the proper operators like bang equals like mod multiply plus minus divide greater than and all the operators that you've gotten used to from uh, major languages but all operators are methods in Scala and now that you have complete freedom you can name your methods as you want you can name them question mark or bang or however you want for example aka actors have operators like bang or question mark these are the ask patterns or the tell patterns between asynchronous actors all right so at this point you've learned about infix notation and operators now you understand why i put them in between quotes because they're not operators per se they're methods now the next thing that i want to talk about is prefix notation by the way this style of writing methods of calling methods in infix notation is called syntactic sugar. An example of syntactic sugar. Syntactic sugars are nicer ways of writing code that are equivalent to more complex or more cumbersome ways of writing code. So the syntactic sugar is more resemblant of natural language and Scala offers this kind of syntactic sugar for methods with single parameters, but there's more. So right now I'm going to talk about prefix notation, which is another form of syntactic sugar. Now prefix notation is all about unary operators. So if I say val x is negative 1, this negative sign over here is a unary operator. Now what I'm here to tell you is that unary operators are also methods. So if I say val y equals 1 dot unary underscore minus, that would be the same thing. So negative one is actually equivalent to one dot unary underscore minus. So unary operators are actually methods with unary underscore prefixed. So negative one here is equivalent with one dot unary underscore minus. Now the unary underscore prefix 
I'm going to write it here so that you have time to write it yourself. So the unary underscore prefix only works with a few operators. So it works with minus, plus, tilde, and the bang operator. So let's give an example and write a unary operator for persons. So say for example, I write a unary underscore bang operator for persons that actually, um, let's say it returns a string and says um, an exclamation or something like that. The implementation is not really important. So I define a method called unary underscore bang. This uh, naming is very important. And I'm going to put a space here and I'm going to say it returns a string. Now the reason I put in a space before the colon of the return type is that if I don't put in a space, then the compiler will uh, think that this colon will be part of the method name. So be very careful right over here and put in a space between the name of the method and the colon for the return type. All right. So let's say that this uh, unary bang operator says an S interpolated string with um, a dollar name, what the heck? Like an exclamation or something like that. We don't really care about the implementation, but we only care that this method returns something. So if we print to the console, not Mary, that means this is equivalent with print lining Mary dot unary underscore bang. So because these two expressions are equivalent, if I go ahead and run this, I'm going to see the same strings printed to the console, which is exactly what happens. All right, so you've learned another form of syntactic sugar with prefix notation. This is pretty cool. Note again that this unary underscore scheme only works with these four operators, plus, minus, tilde, and bang. All right, now, next thing I wanna to talk to you about is, you have probably have the intuition already, post fix notation. We've talked about infix, we've talked about prefix, let's talk about postfix. So this one is pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead in the class person and add a little method called is alive. A very simple method that returns a boolean. And let's just consider the implementation to be true. We don't really care about the actual implementation, we only care about this function signature. That is, the function does not receive any parameters. The functions that do not receive any parameters have the property that they can be used in a postfix notation. Now, what does that mean? If I print line Mary dot is alive, now this is going to call the method, which is something that you already know about from the object oriented basics lecture. But an equivalent way of writing this, again, in a syntactic sugary way, would be to say Mary space is alive. This syntactic sugar is called a postfix notation and again like the infix notation has the purpose of uh, getting Scala closer to natural language. But this is rarely used in practice because the only difference is the difference between a dot and a space and in practice we often use the dot notation, this one, because the um, uh, space notation, the postfix notation, can introduce potential ambiguities when reading the code, not to the compiler, but to us as humans. If you do want to use it, postfix operator notation is only available to methods without parameters. Alright, so you've learned about postfix notation, which is something very simple. The final thing before we move on to exercises is a special method name called apply. Apply has a special property in Scala, and I'm going to show you how that is. So I'm going to go to the person class and I'm going to define a method called apply with parentheses. Parentheses are important. And this is going to return a string and let's say the implementation is going to be uh, a greeting in the same style that we wrote so many times now. So I'm going to say an S interpolated string with hi, my name is name and I like uh, favorite movie, All right? Something very simple. Again, the implementation is not that important, but the uh, method signature. So the method signature is very important. Uh, not so much as the return type, but the method name and the method parameters. Because here's what I'm about to write. So if I print line Mary dot apply, then of course this will call the apply method from 
the Mary object and it will say, hi, my name is Mary and I like uh, what it was at Inception, right? But the trick, if I say Mary parenthesis parenthesis, this has the same effect. So notice how the compiler does not complain. I can basically quote unquote call Mary as if it were a function. And that is because I've defined an apply method in the person class. So whenever you see, whenever the compiler actually, whenever the compiler sees an object being called like a function, it actually looks for a definition of apply in that particular class. So in this case, we have apply defined with no parameters. So the compiler does not really complain that I've called Mary like a function with no parameters because the compiler will actually delegate to the apply method. So these two print line statements are equivalent. Now, if you want to prove to yourself that these are equivalent, you can simply right click and run this. And of course, the program will print the same thing twice. This is extremely cool because it breaks the barrier between object oriented programming and functional programming, as we will see at the beginning of section three, when we talk about what functions actually are. But for now, remember that apply is extremely special in Scala, and we're going to make heavy use of it throughout the entire course. So make sure you get this right. All right, so quite a bunch of new and important concepts. I'm waiting for you in the next video where we get to practice all this stuff. All right, so see you in a sec.